Hey everybody, Tony Tesler here, Tony Stamps, that is me, let me um, get rid of that part, okay, um, so I'm just going to give you a couple minutes, pop on, get over to comments, let me know um, A, that you're here, and that B, that you can hear me, um, I have not, I'm not trying those ear pods again after that fiasco, so I think I've got everything set. Hey, Sue. Hey, Vicki. Darlene. Awesome. Deborah. Hi. So you guys can hear me? Is that um, thumbs up myself? A little bit of echo. All right. You can hear me fine. Awesome. Okay. So today, um, very cool technique with salt. Um, I had promised in my, when I set this up that I was going to try kosher salt too. Uh, that has been determined to be a lie. We do not have kosher salt in the house. We used it all. Hey, Rose. Awesome. Um, so all I'm going to be using tonight is the Mediterranean sea salt. And I like that the best anyway. It's thicker and chunkier and um, I feel like you get better results. Table salt, boo, you hardly see any results. Like you really need the, um, the grand, like big chunks. Hey, Penny. Uh, so let's go over just a couple dates, things that we need to talk about, and then we'll get to it. I actually got my robot buddies kit today too. So I'm going to open that up because I want to see what it looks like. Um, so next week. Monday and Tuesday, March 14th and 15th. That's my March online class. And we are continuing with the um, sea life theme. So um, yeah, chunky is fun, Penny, right? <laughs> In all things, mostly. <laughs> um, so continuing the sea life theme. Um, and that class is going to be different. So I think I said last year I was going to try some different formats. Um, so this month it's going to be strictly a there's no purchase required. So it's going to be $35. That includes the class kit. So we're going to make six cards, six different cards, um, envelopes, everything cut, scored, prepared. You're not going to get any extra like, you know, order a pack of this, get a pack of that, blah, blah, blah. Um, so card kits, you are going to get a pack of the Waves Jewels. So I forget the name of them. Um, classic Matt. No, Faux Sea Glass. Uh, not important. Anyway, the waves one that are like the blue color. So you're going to get that with your kit um, and shipping's included. So we'll go over that more Monday and Tuesday. Um, so the 14th and 15th. March 23rd, the retired list comes out. That is, I believe it's a Wednesday and it's probably going to come out when I'm at work. So I won't be able to send anything out until I get home because I can't do that stuff from work. Um, March 27th, Sunday, Crafty Zoom. So I haven't, I haven't done that since like November, I think. And, um, I really do like to, but, um, yeah, Rose, I'm afraid for the retired list too. Every year we go through this, right? The stress and ugh, what's going to get gone. Um, but so Sunday, March 27th from one o'clock to four o'clock PM Eastern time. So I will get the event created in Facebook and, um, you can respond and I'll need your email because I'm going to email up the zoom link. I'm not going to post that for public because my page is public and we could get some, you know, creeps on there that would show up. So not doing it. Virginia Johnson. I can't believe it. You're here. I hope you're doing well. Are you, are you back from Florida? So, mm, haven't heard from you a bit. Okay. So crafty zoom Sunday, March 27th, anyone's invited. And it's just, we zoom together and work on whatever you're working on. It's no pressure. Um, March 31st, I have to finalize my list to get catalogs mailed out. And I'm going to be doing that a little bit differently this year. Um, the price has gone up. I think it's going to behoove me to hand deliver, um, catalogs that are local in Maryland. Like if there's packs of you together, so I'll be in touch with you. Um, it'll be like the standard ones that I usually like drop off or have you pick up or something. Um, but I'll be in touch with you guys about that. So some I will have shipped, you know, directly. If you've ordered anything in the last year, you'll get a catalog from me. If you don't want one, just let me know. Um, all right. Saturday, April 30th, I'm going to do a retired sale, um, selling all my retired stuff once we get the list. Hi, Peggy. Um, I am going to do that. Much like the fire sale, I'm going to do it on Facebook only. I'm not going to broadcast it to YouTube because um, I'd have to go back and delete it off YouTube because I don't want it out there forever. So I'm just not doing that. So it'll be similar format. Um, you know, I'm going to have something show like this is, you know, whatever set, open it up so you can see this, how much it is. 
And um, I'm probably going to do it like half off the catalog price again, just to get rid of stuff. Um, and it's first come first serve. And, you know, we work out the payment and all that. Um, and then May 3rd, the new catalog starts. So ugh, it's still only March yet. But so that's like for the next couple months, what's coming up. Um, but most importantly is next week is class Monday and Tuesday. And then, Oh, next Thursday is St. Patrick's day. And, um, I've got a fun little treat. We're actually going to work on Easter stuff next week, like Easter basket, um, probably a tag for, you know, Easter -y stuff. I don't have a whole bunch of Easter stuff. I have one set that has a bunny rabbit in it. So we're going to have to make do. Um, but the baskets are cool. I made these years ago. And um, I still have one on my desk. Like, I use it to hold stuff. So next week's going to be fun, too. Um, all right. So let's get cracking. So I want to show you the Robot Buddies kit. Let me go down to my desk. Solo layout. So I just got Robot Buddies. I ordered this mm, last week when it came out and um, just arrived today. So I just want to take a quick peek in here and show you guys what it's like. I do like these boxes. These are, so all the kits come in these brown boxes now. These are the same size as the paper pumpkin boxes. Um, but I like that they're craft and you could repurpose them. Like just put something over here, you know, cover this up and then you have a gift box because there's nothing else on any of the sides that says Stampin' Up. So that's cool. So definitely reuse these. Oh, I didn't realize there was ink pads in here. All right, I've got my salt and water all here, too. So we've got a Bermuda Bay and a Pumpkin Pie ink spot. Um, I already have those, but I like that they are included. Nice. Let's look at the stamp set. The cutest ever. Let me bring a piece of white up under here. So this is like a robot builder. So we've got bodies and two faces. Let's be friends. Happy birthday. And then some little gears. I like it. I like it, like it. All right, put these back, hopefully in order. Um, then we've got, looks like there's a block in here. That's good. You can never have too many blocks, I think. Especially when you're me. Like, I've had my cactus stuff still mounted on half my blocks for the past two months, so it's good to have more. All right, so we've got a block. Let me get rid of this. These cards are cute, at least the colors. So decent sized block, I like it. Um, little, ooh, googly eyes that are colored. So we've got pumpkin pie, granny apple green, Bermuda Bay, probably night of navy and balmy blue. Neat. All right, instructions, cardboard. I've been saving these cardboards to do stuff with, like with journals. Ooh, little tag bits. So labels, dimensionals. Um, I'm not going to go through every single bit. But so these look like stickers. Yep, stickers. All kind of things you can build. Instruction sheet. And of course, you know, you're not committed to having to follow the instructions. Would that go with the robot set in the mini catalog? Um, I do not know what robot set there is in the mini catalog, Darlene. Um, I'm certainly, I mean, robots, you could put whatever you want together, really. Um, actually, yeah, I can't think. Oh, the robot. I know what you mean now. The Valentiny one, right? So yeah, Peggy, this isn't a um, month. This isn't the paper pumpkin. This is one that just went for sale, like in the regular store. Um, I know what you mean now, Darlene. It's in the Valentine section. And I mean, I don't know why you couldn't put them together, but I don't know that it was intended that way, if that's what you're asking. So, but neat. All right, envelopes. They look like all the envelopes are the same. That's cool. Um, looks like some layers and different card bases. So three different card bases. So I'm happy with that. I like it. I thought it was cute. I wanted the robot set. So I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna make those up. All right. So what else did I want to tell you? Um, I think that's it. So let's get into tonight's fun. So salt background stamping. Um, I'm going to use, I'm going to show you an easy 
but not as messy way to do it. And then I'm going to show you the messier way, but I like it better. The idea is you definitely need watercolor cardstock or um, I'm doing some with the shimmery white. The shimmery white, it just can't take as much water as watercolor paper. So you're just not going to get the same results. You do get some results with the shimmery white. Um, thick basic white or regular weight basic white does not work at all. It just, it gets saturated. It can't handle the amount of water that you need. Um, so it's just not a good choice. Watercolor paper is the best though. Um, and I have three different kinds of watercolor paper. So we are going to play with, I have one piece left of, this is the Stampin' Up! watercolor paper. Now I'm going to tell you, honestly, um, Stampin' Up! is not my favorite watercolor paper. So, um, but we're still going to use that. Uh, then we're going to use shimmery white. Then I've got two different kinds of watercolor paper. And you, I know you can't tell the difference um, from the pictures, but one, this is Canson. It's C-A-N, I cut it off, C-A-N-S-O-N. This is, um, it looks smoother. Like the back has a little bit of grain, but I like this one actually the best, especially for printing stuff out on and um, doing some coloring. I like Canson. The other thing that I have is Strathmore. And this is Strathmore. Um, this has more of a grain, like it's definitely got more texture on it. So this is good for this kind of wish-washy watercolor, you know, background. But as far as stamping on this, ugh, you need to have a Stamparatus or a um, Misty or something because with these nooks and crannies, you have to get in there a couple of times with the ink. Okay. So Penny, is Gail left-handed? I didn't think she was left-handed. You're, you're crazy. All right. Um, so easy way, we need a lot of water. So let's get into it. Um, I'm going to need a water bottle, a spray water bottle. Then I'm also going to need um, water. Actually, I've got two cups of water here. Let me drag these in um, so I can show you my water. My salt, I put it in a little, um, this little dish because it's easier to grab it and sprinkle it on. By the way, this is the salt I'm using. This came from Walmart, Mediterranean sea salt. Now it's got a scoop end and a shake end. The shake end doesn't work because the nuggets of salt in here are bigger than the holes. So like I found that out the first time I tried to shake it on there and one grain of salt came out. Like seriously, one. So um, it's easier to just have it in a bowl. Um, but the thicker, the better. Okay. Okay. Um, then we need an aqua painter or a paintbrush, um, just something to get color down. Okay, now before I start, the gist of this technique is we're going to get our paper wet. We're going to add some color. Then we're going to spray more water on it because it really needs a lot of water. And then we're going to quickly sprinkle some salt on it. All right. Um, then I also have these plates. These are plastic. I've had them forever you need something to hold your piece onto um, because you have to move it and there's a lot of water. So I'm going to just use the plates as we do, as we go through it. All right. So the first one, um, lighter colors are not as effective. They lighten up with all the water, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to show you one anyway. Uh, so I'm going to do pool party um, and you can do ring anchors or ink pads. So you can squirt some reinker out on here and um, I'll do that second. Okay. But the first one I'm just going to do, um, I'm using this as my palette. So let's do pool party. So I'm just smashing it on my glass mat pool party. And then we'll do um, crumb cake and crumb cake. I'm surprised that crumb cake um, it has some black in it. Like I can tell when I, the pieces that I did the other day. All right. So we've got, let me see, let me get my plate. Cause you kind of have to be quick at this because the minute your paper starts drying up, um, it's the salt is just not as effective. Okay. So we're going to start with, I like to spray both sides of it because once you spray one side, the paper's going to start to curl and then your ink runs everywhere. So I just wet both sides. So that like takes care of the curl. 
All right, so wet and then spray this side and then it makes it lay flat. Use a lot, lot, lot of water. All right, so this is very wet. Now I kind of want to work quickly. Oh, we need paper towels too because you got to clean things as you go. All right, paper towel. So I'm going to go in the pool party first. So um, I'm just using a cup of water just to make it easier, you know, with my aqua painter. So I'm just going to get water and paint this in. And I can tell already I need more water because that is starting to dry up already. So adding color, all the color, and get it out to the edges, whatever, wherever you want. Okay, rinse, rinse, rinse. Then we're going to go into crumb cake. And you could just drop color on here, like re-anchor. Um, you would get different results for sure. Definitely something to play with. All right. While we have this, I'm going to spray the top part more because that's starting to get dried up. And then we're going to take a little bit of salt and sprinkle all around. Now, do you see how it's already, the salt is already starting to grab the color, like from the pool party and the crumb cake? Mmm, that's what we want. The more salt, the more it grabs the color and moves it around. So now we have to sit this off to dry and we're going to have to let it dry overnight. So I had to make some other ones so we could actually do something with today. Um, I don't suggest using a heat tool to hurry things along because it just won't dry the same. Just let it go naturally. It'll be fine. It's just something that's not gonna be a quick um, project. All right, let's clean this off. So I'm gonna have to make piles um, where I can reach. So that was pool party and crumb cake. Um, I think on my other sample, I'm going to clean this with alcohol right now just to get that ink off. Um, my other sample, I actually used, um, what's the other blue? Not balmy blue, a coastal cabana. All right, let's get this cleaned up. So that was with a aqua painter and um, the ink pad. So let's try... This one is shimmery white. Um, so again, shimmery white does not have the same effect, um, but we can do, let's do some re-anchors. So same thing. I'm just gonna do, let's do melon mambo, pumpkin pie, and a yellow. Yeah, it is cool, Penny. It's something you definitely need to give it a try and practice. Um, so let's squirt out a couple of drops of the Melon Mambo and then Pumpkin Pie. Oops, a little heavy handed with the Pumpkin Pie, but that's okay. And then Daffodil Delight. And I'm trying to use the colors that I've already used for the cards that we're going to make. Okay. So again, we're going to start with spraying liberally with water, both sides. So flip it. So see how this starts to curl? I don't know if you can tell that, but it is starting to curl. So that's why I want to flip it and spray the other side, just so it's samesies. And then it goes flat. All right, so I'm going to start with the lightest color. So we're going to start with yo-yo yellow. I mean, yo-yo yellow. Listen at that. See how it's already like getting soaking up and dry? That's not what we want. So I'm just going to try to keep it as wet as I can um, to Daffodil Delight. Yo-yo yellow. That's funny. All right. Same thing with the pumpkin. I'm just going to drip some colors in rinse out. I'm rinsing out in a jar that you can't see. So over here, just a little mason jar full of water. And then I'm just going to put it in the Melon Mambo. And I'm going to spray this with some more water. Because we need the water to like activate. And then we'll add our salt. 
and then this one will have to go sit off to the side. So, and you can tilt it and the colors will move, but you can see how it's like grabbing up the colors. So that's what we want. We want that salt to um, react with the, the colors. Okay. All right, so then we clean this up. So the reinker is kind of messy, um, but it is neater than what I'm gonna show you next. So I know I've done this before, the ink smashing, which I don't know that my camera is straight. Oh, oops. Sorry, you guys. That was not straight. Um, ink smashing is my favorite. It's kind of like ink smushing, but on a bigger scale. All right, so more alcohol just to get this a little bit clean. This is where I'm going to show you more um, the other two watercolor papers because I like them better anyway than the Stampin' Up. Plus the Stampin' Up, it's so small. I thought it was um, like six by nine, the sheet, so I cut one in half, so I thought, and it's not six by nine. Blech. All right, so um, shimmery, we'll put that to the side. So this first one is the Canson, C-A-N-S-O-N. I really like this one. Um, and then the Strathmore is uh, thicker or like more textury. So this technique, and I'm only going to do these two, um, and then we're going to make cards with the, the ones that I made. And I'll show you previous um, versions. All right. So I need, let's see, I used Gorgeous Grape. And this is really pretty. Gorgeous Grape and Bermuda Bay. My thinking with these colors was it could be Sea Life or it could be um, Outer Space. So Bermuda Bay. Now I don't want to touch this ink pad in this color. So I just kind of have to pay attention like where I'm going because you don't want to contaminate your inks. All right. So ink smashing. This technique goes back to like my second or third video that I ever did. Um, I showed you guys this. I love it. Love it. Love it. All right. We spray our color or smash our colors down. I've got to do this two handed because I don't have enough room over here um, to set my tray or my plate. All right, so I'm gonna spray, same as I did before, spray both sides of the watercolor paper, okay? This is just to get things going. I want like a wet on wet here. Now this ink, I'm gonna spray that too. And you see how the colors start to move together? That's totally fine. So I wanna dip it right in there. Now this is messy, like my fingers are gonna get, um, oh man, I cut my fingernails last night. <laughs> All right, so, ooh, look at that, I love it. Now we need more water to get things moving and then salt, 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 salt. Ooh, see how that's going with the pink? I mean, it's turning pink already, I love it. Neat, neat, neat. So it's quick to, to get this done with the smashing. All right, let me put this to the side. Now I'm gonna do, we still have all this ink, so I'm gonna use this other piece was my Strathmore. So again, let's, um, actually let me get this out of the way. We're gonna spray both sides with water. And I don't mind that, um, I mean, my hands will, they clean up. It'll be fine. All right, lots of water, lots of water. Now I'm just gonna dip this in. And I feel like this is wasteful because this ink is, ooh, nice. All right, so see how that like had a white spot? Just go back and press it in and get some more color on there. Mm. And let's add our salt. Do you see the texture on this one? That really is the paper. I like it. Neat. So I love the ink smashing. And then the salt is definitely going to sit and make something pretty. Um, now for this. So I don't want to let this ink just go to totally to waste. So I'm just going to take some of my other papers and drag them through. So this is my shimmery white. I'm not going to get it wet. I'm just going to 
drag it right through, press it, and get like some neat backgrounds. So I'm going to use that for later. Look at how all this blue, like from, it was purple. I don't know if it was from the Bermuda. I really think it's all the blue from the, the purple, like from the gorgeous grape. Mmm, I like this. So these I'm just going to use later. Ooh, I like it. So we've got that. And one more. Let me spray this some more. Give it a little bit more water. And actually, let's do this. Mm, I'll do some more salt on this one, too. Why not? All right. Wet, wet, wet. I'm going to drag this through the color. So we get, ooh, it's getting lighter and lighter. And then let's add some color or some salt. So this will be interesting to see how this light one comes out. But I can see, see how the salt, like the color starts to, um, it gets like sucked away. It's interesting for sure. All right, put that pile over there. Okay, so that is how you do the salt technique. You get color on your paper, add more water. You need a lot of water and then you add your salt. Like just, you know, a few pinches of salt. Then you let it dry for 24 hours. So let me put my salt back in. Oh, I got some discoloration in here from my, um, I should do that later, from my inky fingers. I'll have to pick through that. All right, let's put this somewhere right there. And I'm going to get rid of this glass mat um, so I can clean that up later. Mmm, look how this is turning already, you guys. That is really cool. I love that. That was that must have been one of the first ones we got because that has a, a good um, separation of the purple and the Bermuda. Okay, so clean that later. Um, my hands will have to be fine. Okay, water. I need a drink of water. So now let's look at some pieces that I have already done. All right, I need to get my a piece of white to work with. I mean, to cover. Oh, it's crazy how the different papers really do react different. So, um, the Canson, I would say, is the my preferred watercolor paper for for most things, at least for stamping on because it's smoother. Um, but I do like the strap more for more, um, just, you know, wishy-washy watercolor stuff. All right, let's look at other ones. So these go back a couple of years ago, Peggy, these were when we first did this technique. Um, this was a uh, shimmery white paper and this was, I believe, smoky slate. So see how it got like an amoeba kind of pattern. I like it. These little marks here, that's where the salt was. Those were the grains of salt. And then it, it just spreads out. So that's really neat. Um, this was probably pumpkin pie or something. And again, with shimmery white. So these dark spots are where it just got too much. I think I dropped re directly onto the paper. Yeah, Peggy, these, I've had these. I've only used a couple of these. So, um, Reanchor right on the paper. This was another where I watercolored um, right on the cardstock and then added the salt. For some reason, I don't know what kind of paper this was. This reacted opposite from everything else. Like everybody else, all the other ones, the salt like made the color dissipate. And this is just not the same. Um, same here, different results. I don't know what I did different here. Ooh, giraffe. You're right. That would make a good giraffe something. I don't even have any giraffe stamps, but that's a definitely a good um, to cut that out. This is another with smoky slate. And this was a different kind of water paper. Again, watercolor paper, so different results. This one feels different. Like this is not the two that I have now. This isn't Canson or Strathmore. 
I have no idea. It was so old. Um, but it's definitely different. This is from those brusho colors that we used to have. The um, the crystals that you would put with water. This was the mossy green one. And there's like bits of blue and, and yellow in here. Um, so those were neat. Now let's look at the ones I did just this week. So we're going to actually make three different cards with, um, we're going to pick out of here that I made. So this was, um, this was stamping up watercolor paper and it was just crumb cake. So I did the crumb cake on my glass mat and sprayed it with water and then dragged this through and then put the salt on. So the crumb cake, apparently, this looks like black bits or purple or something. That looks interesting. I, I, I'm surprised that those colors came out. Um, but I am going to, and the salt made it like darker spots. So I'm going to use that for later. This one I'm going to use tonight. This was Coastal Cabana and crumb cake. Now this time the crumb cake, you know what? It must be the pad, the paper or something, different paper. Because this time the crumb cake, there's like shades of pink in it. It's crazy. Yeah, crumb cake has a vintage tea dyed look. I agree, Peggy, on here. But here, like there's definitely more pinks coming out. So I don't know. Maybe one of them I used a re -inker. I really can't remember. Um, but I like that the salt, when it laid down, it made these darker spots too. So we're going to use that. Look at this. Oh, my God. This is the... Gorgeous Grape and Bermuda Bay. So look at the differences. Like this one, you know, a lot more lighter space and it looks like more spreading out. Here, more amoeba looking. I love it. I love all of these. Now this one, I don't know if you can tell. Um, so when this dries, oh, actually I have another one to show you. Um, when the salt dries, you have to like brush it off of the paper with your hands. All right. And I don't know if you can see, but there are little um, like crystals left. If you want to stamp on it, you have to take a sanding block and um, get these off. So I just take it and do like this. You're just scraping that, you know, it looks like little diamonds are stuck on there. So I just scrape that off. Mm. I love these. Uh, I'm going to use one of these tonight. I don't know what. Then these were the same colors, the Melon Mambo, Pumpkin Pie, and Daffodil Delight. And again, two different papers. Um, one has the more splotchy for the Melon Mambo. And again, I don't know if you can see these. Oh, I think now you can see the little crystals, how it looks like, um, you know, crystals, really. If you didn't want to stamp on this, I don't see why you couldn't leave the crystals on there. Um, I don't know. I want to get them at least off the edge. Because that might be neat to leave it on. Actually, we'll use this one. Yeah. Then these two were just my ink smashing that I had extra paper left. and Just because I like those colors. So again, this was Gorgeous Grape and Bermuda Bay. I love these. All right, so we're going to use, um, oh, wait, this is a different size. Let me measure. I might have to cut my layers. Three and a half. Oh, this is a wonky. This is the wonky piece that I cut. All right, we're going to use this one because I want to have to trim it down a little. Oop. Four by five and a quarter. All right, I am still going to trim that down. Um, we're going to make three cards with these bits. And this one, I think I'm going to use this because I'm going to go with the stellar birthday. So we're going to do an outer space. Yeah, Penny, you can totally make your own horizon paper. Um, and I don't see why that, you know, this could be a horizon. This could be a horizon. Depends on what you do with it, right? Um, so we're going to use that one. And then let me show you. This is the one. So this is how it looks when it's dried. This, I think, is going to be a nice snowflake card. So let me drag this up. Can you see all the salt still stuck on here? I really did a job putting that on there. So what you do, I usually do this over the trash can. I rub it right off because it really is stuck to the paper. Okay, turn it around. And we're just getting these crystals off of here. And then if I was going to stamp on it, um, I probably would you know, run my sanding block over it, but, Ooh, this is really neat. I think this is going to go nice with 
Um, I still have the dye, I think, from years ago. Hey, Sean. Yeah, I did all the um, the salt part in the beginning, so you'll have to catch that again. <laughs> but now we're going to actually make cards with the, the pieces that I made earlier this week. Um, but I think a snowflake dye would do really nice with this. Maybe the mother of pearl paper that we have now and cut some smallish snowflakes and, you know, have a couple here. I think that's neat. But look at the color of the salt. So you can tell it really is, it's like drawing the color off of your piece. So interesting. I love the results. Um, so let's start with this one. So I figured we would do a um, this was kind of like beachy to me. So we're going to go with seize the day and or whale done. Um, so I've got crumb cake, crumb cake base, five and a half by eight and a half. And then I embossed two pieces of crumb cake because I didn't know which one I would want to use. I did um, painted textures and the macrame. So I'm just going to have that on there. And then this, hmm, I do have to trim this down some. Cause I don't want that. That looks weird. Yeah. All right. Let me get this out of the way. My cup of water. So I'm going to cut some of the blue part off. All right. So let's see. Three and three eighths. Ugh. Trying to do math. So this is um, a half and then an eighth. So five and a quarter, a half and then an eighth. So, all right. So that should be Nice, that fits. Okay. Whew. All right, so let's do, um, boop, boop, boop. I think maybe painted texture, because just a little bit's gonna poke out. Mm, I don't know, what do you guys think? Painted texture or macrame? Can you tell a difference from that? Penny, you can use salt to make your mother-in-law a festive drink. <laughs> I could if she was still around, but she wouldn't drink anyway. All right. I think I'm going to go with the um, macrame. Rose, use that leftover salt in a shaker card for sure. Oh, you guys want painted texture? Okay. Painted texture it is. Yeah. Actually, I could color. Um, I could just color a whole bunch of this and then make like a little margarita shaker card. All right. So let's do. Um, doot, doot, doot. I wanted some of this leafy business, whatever this is, seaweed or something. All right. Is that going to fit on there? Good enough. Nope. Okay. So crumb cake and this was coastal cabana. So I kind of want to stick with just those colors because I don't want to get too crazy. I guess I could bring in some green, but um, I'm not like that. Ooh, that's nice and dark. I must have re-inked this. Let's do some stamp off too. Okay, nice. All right, Coastal Cabana, I want a jellyfish and some fish, and then we got to have the crab too. All right, crab and jellyfish. The je jellyfish is going to be in the blue and nice. I'm going to have to clean all these later. Krabby Crab. He can go right down here. Even though being from Maryland, it should be a blue crab, but we're going to make do. All right. Actually, let me do this here. Doot, doot, doot. Stamp off. Actually, put one there. Neat. Okay. I don't want a ton of stuff here, though. So I want this greeting to come over here. So actually, I think I'm going to leave that just like that. So the greeting, I figured um, we'd emboss some white on a piece of Coastal Cabana. And I cut that with the tasteful tasteful labels dies 
Yeah, stamping on watercolor paper takes takes the color in or takes the dye in. It's definitely tricky um, as far as like getting a, a clean, crisp image. But this, I, that's why I chose this anyway, because it's one of those distinctives that's kind of like got the shading built in. Um, all right, so seize the day. I want the greeting to go like over here. So I've got whale done. Actually, you know what? No, I'm going to do um, wishing you oceans of happiness. Yeah. I wish this had a birthday. Thanks in the depths of my heart. Let me see if this will fit. Oh, that's, that'll fit. All right, we'll do that. Because I think I did wishing you oceans of happiness um, on a different card. All right, let's get this mounted. So I have a bunch of different blocks that have these lines on them. And uh, I just got these at Michael's. Michael's or Joann's. I can't even remember. Years ago. All right, time check, 20 minutes. Okay, Versa Mark. I mean, these are really going to go together quick. The important part was showing you that the salt. All right, Versa Mark, and then we're going to do white embossing powder. And hopefully, this is straight ish, straight enough. But I did cut two in case I messed it up. Where's my white powder? Oh, underneath my water. All right, let's hit that uh, twice. Oh, nice. I did get that good. Good and straight. And then we're going to use the white on another card. We're going to emboss on black cardstock. So, all right, let me heat this up. Mm. You know what I need to get is my Pampered Chef um, tongs, my bamboo tongs, so that I can hold all these and not burn my finger. All right, let's glue this on. So I'm just going to glue the painted textures background on flat. Oh, there we go. I want more of that glue to come out, especially for Rose's benefit. There we go. Looks like something's stuck in there. Yep, a little glue booger. All right, let's put this on. Nice. Now this piece I want um, popped up. All right, I'm getting down. I've got three more rolls of this stuff. And then I will get to use the stuff I got from the dollar store finally. So this came from scrapbook.com, I think, and it's not as wide as the other batch I had. So, I mean, it's still a quick way to get a lot of foam on, like instead of sitting here and putting, you know, a bunch of dimensionals on. Um, but I did like the wider stuff better because it just covered it quicker. I didn't have to use as much of it, I guess. So I set that glass mat right on top of my trash can, and now I can't get to my trash can. <laughs> oh, well. All right, let me look up. Yeah, Rose, there I go with the glue. So my mom said she was going to pop on. Um, I wonder if she's busy doing other stuff. She could be. All right, let's put this on. Mmm, nice. And then I want this to hang off just a little. I'm not going to pop that up. So I'm just going to glue this right on. 
but I do need some gems. So I was thinking the blue adhesive back gems are too dark. So uh, we're going to go back to my newest favorite, which is the uh, rhinestone, iridescent rhinestones. And I know I've got one that's open already. Where did that go? Ugh. All right, I cannot find them, so we're going to open this. Oh, it was right there. Jeez. All right, I love these iridescent ones because they really do work with any color. Like, they're going to pick that up nice. Now, I may find that I have to go back and add some glue um, just to get things to stick to the watercolor paper. Actually, you know what? I should just put that on there from the get. Oops. And see... Actually, let's see if that's going to show through or not, because look at that. That's like clear. So hopefully this should dry clear, but I'm going to put one there. The re gushing out like this, I'm not worried about it because it definitely is going to dry clear. It's fine. I just don't trust these to stick on the, um, on the watercolor paper. All right, let's get that off of there. And then we'll do um, a couple up here. Well, actually one up here. Maybe two. And then I need another one somewhere. I think over here. So that'll be groups of three. Boop, right there. Nice, I love it. So we've got five rhinestones, um, but I love that. Thanks for the depth of my heart. Okay. I like that with just the, um, this layer popped up. Yeah. Rose, you always use a, a dot of glue on the adhesive rhinestones. They get knocked, knocked off of a card in the mail. Yeah, you're right. Sometimes there's a lot of wear and tear on them. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Let's move on to, um, let's move this. I'm gonna make piles. So next I wanted to work on this one. So we have got, I thought Stellar Birthday would be perfect. Hi, Inky Pulped, awesome. I'm glad you like it. Um, so we're going to do stellar birthday because I thought this would be good for outer space or sea life stuff. But in this case, I want outer space. And I had already stamped and started coloring a set of these children and the little rocket ship. So I'm just going to finish that. And then we're going to use either. Actually, let me get this out of the way. We're going to go with either. Um. Gorgeous Grape or Bermuda Bay. And I'm going to wait and see, you know, what looks best. Um, but I need a black layer. And I think I have to trim this down a little bit. Yep. So we're either going to go Gorgeous Grape or Bermuda Bay. Um, but we're going to get our people colored first, and then we'll see which one we like better. So let me just color, trim this up. So four, I'm going to go down three sixteenths of an inch. My black layer is four by five and a quarter. So I'm going to go three sixteenths. And that's only because I think an eighth inch is um, a little small in this case. And a quarter inch is too big. So we're going to go right in the middle with three sixteenths. And I tried to cut it, you know, from the end that we're not really losing any of the good stuff. All right. So it's going to go like this. Yeah. With all that dark, I really wanted the black. Okay. Let me go ahead and glue this on. Now this I'm going to use regular Tombow just because this um, watercolor paper is thick. And I have to use this up. Once I run out of this, I don't know if I'm going to buy any more of it because I really do like the art glitter glue and the, um, 
the what's the other one the bear barely art i like both of those i like them better because they're not as like sticky when you get it on your fingers like here squishing that out i'm gonna have to get um let's drag this piece of paper in because i don't want to put my finger right on that the tombow stuff is super sticky oh and i did land it Okay. All right, let's let that sit and we will color some people. So I just wanted to go quick color them. So I had already started. Um, I got her in the blues and I thought I would do him in the purples. Um, so Rita Bay. So I got like Rich Razzleberry. I don't have Gorgeous Grape. I've got Rich Razzleberry and Blackberry Bliss. So let's try Blackberry Bliss. So dark and light. So I'm not like um, super good at the coloring stuff. I just put a little bit different. I don't know like where the light hits and, and all that. Um, Gail is a lot better at the coloring. I just try to go for like, so there's something different. So it looks like a shadow maybe. All right, Blackberry Bliss Light. Then I just go over it again. And now that I look at their faces, I'm reminded that um, I still need to get my color chart done for those, the Stampin' Blends that were uh, part of the All Together uh, bundle that we could get. There hasn't been time for everything, you guys. All right, quickly. And I may not even finish coloring their faces and stuff in because... Um, the biggest part of tonight was showing you the salt technique and this I can finish like tonight and then just post the pictures just so you get the idea. Right. All right. Um, boots, boots, boots and rocket. So rocket, I think should use both the colors. So blue, dark Bermuda Bay. Uh, let's do this and the pointy part. Oh, uh, oops, fat end. You know, I was doing something, coloring something the other day, and my So Saffron marker, which I haven't used it a lot, it, one of these, the Stampin' Blends. I mean, this tip was all jacked up, but there was no color. It was wet, like it had a lot of alcohol still in it, but there was hardly any color. And I don't know if it was supposed to be like that. So I threw it away. It was no, no use to me. It was the So Saffron Light. Ugh. All right, let's go with the Dark Blackberry Bliss. Yeah, Gail, um, she is the, very good with the coloring for sure. All right, I'm just going to put some down here. I guess the fire should be yellow or orange. It doesn't have to be. I mean, it's my color, my card. It can be whatever color I want, right? All right. Hmm. Maybe we'll use the rich Razzleberry. And these are the old ones. Oh, nice. That's dark. All right. Let's do that. And I can tell this is starting to get dried up, but that's fine. I've had them forever. Rich Razzleberry Medium. And then we'll go with the light. I'm just trying to be like a little bit different. Different shades and then go around here. All right, that's good enough. Okay, yeah, I think I'll come in later and make their boots like gray and their um, She'll probably get brown hair and he can have yellow hair. But for now, let's just trim these. And let's just start here. So when I'm cutting, I just guide with my left hand and with my right hand, I just do the scissors up and down.
and I'm not trying to go super fast, but I'm also not that concerned about it. Like if it's not even, if I, if I don't get the same white border around everything, uh, it's not the end of the world. And if you don't like a white border, don't do it. Cut it right on the black line if you want. Actually, if you do that, and then you can go around the edges with a black marker, that hides any whoopsies. Oh, and I got this right on the edge, so... Ugh. Yeah, I might have to bust out like a silver marker or something too for um, like their belt. They can have some little silver bits. All right, him. And let's get her. This was one that came out in just this, the annual catalog last year, and I thought was so cute. And I think I've used it like twice. Shameful. But it is cute. So I can tell I must have stamped this on the basic white thick. Because it cuts a little different. When you're using your blends, you do want a thicker paper. Either shimmery white or the thick basic white. Oh, now see here, I got a little too close on her helmet. Not the end of the world. So yeah, Crafty Zoom at the end of the month, I will create a an event for that. And um, if you can pop in and join us, awesome. We're just going to hang out and work on whatever we're working on. It's not any, it's freestyle. It's not like there's any, you know, demo. I'm not giving you any secrets or, you know, we're not doing any projects. It's whatever you are working on. And I will email the link because, like I said, I don't want to put that out on public. I'm not just going to post it, you know, on my public page because anybody could then grab it. And we don't necessarily want people that aren't here to stamp and have a good time. You know what else I'm going to do um, is run Oink Estella on this. Because this could definitely be shimmery. Okay, good enough. Let me do my... Um, and I'm just going to do it all over the ship because I want the whole thing to be sparkly. And actually I'm gonna wait until I color their faces, but I just wanna give you the idea of this is how it's gonna work. Do you want us to use the current year of projects? <laughs> Penny. <laughs> You're right, these kids would be cute with wobblers, Peggy. Penny, you work on whatever you want on, whatever you wanna work on. If it's current year, if it's five years ago, if it's last year, whatever. All right, so let's look at, I want the purple guy up here. So this kind of bothers me that it's not the same shade, that it's not Gorgeous Grape. Because remember, I didn't have Gorgeous Grape. Um, I guess I could have used Highland Heather. But let's look at, I really did want the purple. Mm, I might have to go with the Bermuda just because this coordinates with, with the card more than this. Or I could just say, why am I letting it bother me so much, right? Yeah, let's go with purple. I convinced myself. All right. So I need um, a little scrape here. Get rid of that glue. So all I'm going to do for this one is um, mount it. I'm going to pop these guys up. So I'm going to glue this on flat. 
I really love this background. Mm. I tell you guys, you have to get some Mediterranean sea salt. That is the best. Like the chunkier, the better. And I do apologize. I told you in the ad that I was going to have kosher salt. And like I said earlier, that was a lie. Um, I thought we had that down in the cupboard and we do not. So I guess we used it all. All right. So this, doot, 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 that can go there. And I would just emboss a greeting. Like, you know, have a stellar birthday. But I don't want to cover up all, all of this. Um, and actually, you know what? Let's put these on because I want to color them first before I attach them. But that's how that one's going to go. And then I may bring in some of the blue adhesive back, some of these dark ones. I might bring that in for there. So, but that's a general idea. And um, the background still shines through on that. I really like it. Okay. Stellar birthday. Now, last one. Um, and this one, I'm only going to stamp the greeting. So on this one, I want to use this piece. This was, remember, Melon Mambo, uh, Pumpkin Pie, and Daffodil Delight. So I want to use, I just got these, the Paradise Palms. <clears throat> Sue has done some really good stuff with those. Um, let me get this out of the way. So I mounted one greeting. So we're going to do the Happy Birthday and Melon Mambo, five and a half by eight and a half. And then I'm going to do a, I think I'm going to do a pumpkin pie layer. Oop, I got to trim this one down. Maybe I had them both cut and I thought, I don't know which one I want to use. Yeah. Let me trim this down a little bit though. So five and a half. This time I'm going to cut um, just a straight eighth inch. So this will be three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. And I would of course go back and put white on the insides. Um, so we're either going to have this, which looks like a lot of pink. The orange kind of gets lost. Um, and what we're going to do is I die cut the palm trees. So we're just going to have this like that. Maybe I could do them over here and have this. I think I want this on the pumpkin though, because I want more orange. I like pink and orange together. And I know that's probably like not, I don't know if that's against color rules, but mm, I like it. Okay. And then we're going to emboss white on that black reading. So let me start by, and I'm not doing any stamping on this. So it's just letting the background be cool. Hey, Virginia, it is stinking cool. I'm telling you, it's all in the salt. Mediterranean sea salt or whatever. I think I've seen like Himalayan, whatever Walmart has. Himalayan sea salt, just whatever they have that's like um, unusual, you know. I've seen pink, like Himalayan pink. Yes, Peggy, instant sunset look. That's what I was going for. Same page. All right, I like it. All right, now I want to get up in here a little bit with these pieces that are hanging up. All right, so the beauty of this glue, I can squish it right out and then run my finger right over it. And it does not make my fingers a sticky mess. So Rose, I ordered those magnets that we were talking about the other day and um, mine should be here tomorrow. So that is awesome. Oh, you guys. So last weekend I went to a prop on Saturday and I finally got to work on, I did a, I signed up for an online class to make a scrapbook like from scratch. I did that last year, like last April actually. And, uh, you know, I thought I was going to have all this free time. Um, and I just got it done last weekend. Virginia, you have kosher salt and pink Himalayan salt too. It's too long. 
yeah, definitely. Um, it's a little bit of a mess, but a lot of fun. So anyway, the scrapbook class, uh, it actually aired, the video aired like June, early June. So I took my iPad to the crop and got to watch the video and make it. So I made a eight by eight scrapbook legit out of chipboard pieces and then covered it with cardstock and it looks amazing. Um, I am wanting to do a class of that. So I just have to get my act together and make some more. Like I wasn't totally thrilled. Um, the pages are like a hinge system. I'll have to show it to you guys some other time. Uh, and actually I have to finish putting, you know, decorating the pages. Um, but I like it. It's a hinge system. I've never done that before. It's very interesting. Um, so let's do this. Doot, doot, doot. Yeah. All right. So put this one down first and I am going to let them hang over a little bit and then I'll just trim whatever hangs off. But to make a scrapbook, like, you know, I've watched so many videos and seen it, but it never actually sat down and did it myself. It's not as hard as I expected. I was so intimidated, but there was no need. Um, and now I feel like I can make them and use like fabric covers, like all kinds of cool stuff. All right. So I'm going to overlap these a little bit. Let me just hold that down. Virginia, you're in no hurry. Oh, so you guys are still in Florida. When are you going to go back? I guess it is still March, huh? It is still chilly up there. All right. I'm going to let that go. Mm-mm. Mm, I feel like I want this one to be, I didn't want to overlap it so much. That'll be fine. So yeah, Virginia, let me know when you get back. Are you going to stay like through the end of March? We haven't heard from you much. I hope you're having fun. Doing fun Florida stuff. Actually, you know what? I can pop this up a little bit because... I'm going to have this bit of grass to come over and cover up uh, like right here. Nice. Okay. So let me trim this off. And this is going to go right here. Actually, I wish I had trimmed. I want this little bit off too. Nope. That might be on there forever. Okay. Forget it. Let's glue this on. And the only thing I'm going to pop up is probably the greeting on here. And then this whole layer. All right, let's get this down. Nice. I like it. Actually, I love it. I'm trying to think, do I have any um, pink or whatever gems? I think it's going to be another opportunity for those iridescent rhinestones, you guys. All right, let's put this on. Ooh, I like that. All right, so the greeting. I had picked um, this happy birthday, and this is going to fit in the double oval punch. So we're going to take a scrap of black and it with the embossing buddy, and we will stamp in Versamark. And I'm going to go kind of like right in the middle there so I can get both those punched out at the same time. And then we will add our white powder. And I'm hitting it a couple times. I like two or three. And get this off of here. Ooh, that is nice. Okay. Put this back. Yeah, the salt background technique, definitely make up a bunch. Like, try a whole bunch of different colors. Because if you're going to make a mess, just make it. Make a whole bunch of different choices. All right, let's heat this up. Okay. That went quick. 
All right, now let's punch this out. Actually, let me let that cool down for a minute because I don't want that powder to be like still squishy. All right, let's put foam on here. So I'm looking for a Virginia. Um, no, no hurry to get back. So are you going to be back at March or April? I mean, not that it's any of my business. I'm just curious. <laughs> and did you sign up for that um, training thing that we were talking about? When is that? Sue and Gail and I signed up for it. And we picked, I don't know if we all got in the same session or not, but it's like early April. The thing, it's online. The on tour, on tour, is it? Yeah. Okay, now I would normally put glue on this so I could wiggle it around, but I am going to eyeball it and there we go. Good enough. All right, let's punch this out so I can get both of these. And I am sticking with the black on black here. All right, so get this piece out. Oh, you could, I cut out Darlene. I hope, was I cut out for everyone? I hope not. I mean, I'm sad that I cut out for you, but um, I hope I'm still going. Gail, it's being held in Sue's lanai. <laughs> yeah, you guys will have fun. All right, so let's double put this black on black. Nice, and then we will pop this up. Ooh, I like that. And I think I'm gonna use uh, black dimensionals. Get rid of these minis. So I like the minis, um, but I just wish that the black ones came separately. Like. I wish I could get just minis or just regular size because I feel like I go through the regular size a lot quicker and then I'm left using up all the minis. And then when I cut my fingernails, I can't grab them. There we go. Oh, for Pete's sake. All right. Let's get this. Yeah. Iridescent rhinestones are going to be perfect for this. You're going to do this technique with your grandkids. That's awesome. Oh, Julie. So let me read this again. The last time they made backgrounds for me using reinkers on baggies, spritzed water and used straws to help move the ink around. Oh, that's awesome. You could cover like your whole work surface with um, press and seal and do that too. But I do like the baggy idea. All right, let's do that right there. And then iridescent rhinestones. Yeah, as long as you don't mind getting a little bit messy, which obviously you don't, I think that would be amazing. Reinkers and baggies. I'm going to have to try that. Virginia, so you're going to, um, you don't know if you'll be home in time. Well, you would have had to sign up. I, I guess they still have spaces. Let's do that there. I mean, you would know if you signed up or not. And they had different days. I just wanted to try to get in like one of the first ones. Um, Cause they've got them like every Saturday pretty much. And then a bunch of things during the week, but they have them through April. But I think I'm signed up for like the first, first day. Hmm. All right. Maybe right there. I want two and three. Ooh. I love it. I could use a couple more though over here, right? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do a medium. Why stop at three? Let's do a medium and then another small one. Boop. Um, we'll put that like right there. Neat. And again, that glue is all going to dry clear. So don't you worry that that's going to show up later because it's not. All right, let me get my pen in here. And then, ooh, it's 9.15. All 
I don't like to keep you guys past an hour, but it is what it is. All right, so I am going to finish coloring my people, these children, and then I will get my blog updated in the next mm, couple of days. Let's say by Saturday. Um, but so here is our the cards that we made with our salt background. So we've got the Coastal Cabana and Crumb Cake. This was Gorgeous Grape and Bermuda Bay. And then this was Melon Mambo, Pumpkin Pie, and Daffodil Delight. So, yeah, I love all of them. Mm, I really like the pattern that I got on this one. I think it's because it's um, like the darker colors makes it pop more. Um, but this is nice too. So, ugh. Okay, you guys, um, don't forget Monday and Tuesday is uh, my March class. And again, we're doing, thanks you guys. Um, I'm doing waves of the ocean stuff and stay tuned for that. So I'll be back Monday at eight and then Tuesday at eight, we're doing six cards. Um, and then there's also going to be a bonus tutorial for, you know, people that want to get the kit. Um, okay. So have a good rest of your week and I guess we'll all, I'm going to try to catch, um, Sue tomorrow and, Gail on Sunday. Virginia, thanks for hanging out. It was great to hear from you. And Sean, awesome. Cindy, thank you guys. Okay. I will catch you guys later. Bye.